flags have been won, celebrations done. Hello and welcome to a Premiership edition of Premier Cricket TV. My name is Megan Hustwaite. Great to have your company for the final time this season on KO Sports and the Victorian Premier Cricket Facebook page. Well, we are going to crack into it. We've got two big guests at the desk with us this week as we dissect the four grand finals and premiers across Victorian Premier Cricket. And joining us at the desk is two-time now Premiership player and two-time guest on Premier Cricket TV. Hello, Xavier Crone. Thanks, Megan. I like the sound of that. Me too. Which part? The Premiership? The, yeah, the two-time Premiership <laughs> player. That's uh, certainly got a nice ring to it. It sure does. Congratulations and great Thank to you. have you here. Cheers. And joining us again from Premier Cricket, it's only fitting because he was here the very first week and he's here to see us out at the end. Liam Murphy, welcome. Thank you, Megan. Great to be here. Great to have you again. Well, let's start with the Blues because they are champions after defeating Casey South Melbourne in the first 11 decider at the Albert Ground on Saturday. It was a cracking game and we're going to take a look Look at the scorecard and Xavier let's talk through the toss um, Casey batting first what did you think of the score they did post nine for 200 which was a pretty good total considering um, all things and Luke Manders has been the star for them in recent weeks and he was again with 63 off 103 top scoring yeah absolutely Luke's had a great year for Casey and he got off to a really good start and they were probably none for 30 or none for 40 and it was looking quite ominous and then the boys in the middle with the ball Eddie O'Sullivan and Tom and Evan were exceptional to pin that back to 205 which Runs on the board in finals is always going to be hard. That scoreboard pressure sort of always adds a different element. But overall, the boys were pretty happy to be chasing 200 at the Albert. Yeah, we'll have a look at the highlights now. And um, let's talk a bit about the bowling because you've got a spread of bowlers who've stood up at different times during the year, including yourself. But Eddie um, and Golbus, as you said, shared six wickets. But let's talk about Eddie O'Sullivan because he really stood up again on the big stage. Yeah, Eddie's... Um, in our circles, he's probably our number one bowler. We, we know what he can do and that if when he's on, we tend to do really well. So he's highly rated amongst our group and it's good to see him do it on the big stage where he's going to get some recognition from outside of our, our group. Now, you picked up the big wicket of Casey South Melbourne captain Michael Wallace. Take us through what it was like out there in the early stages of that opening session at the Albert Ground. Yeah, <clears throat> grand final, it's always going to be a lot of nerves in the air. Um, and it was sort of nice once we got that first wicket to then be able to sort of add two or three to the scoreboard in the next sort of 10 overs. So that was a really good feeling in the group and I think it helped us sort of calm the nerves and settle everyone to get back into sort of how we play our cricket. Well, Tom Smythe, will talk about him a lot to come, but he also chimed in with a wicket as well. And I guess um, consistent performances has been the key to Carlton's success. And we saw that again with the ball and we'll take a look um, at your innings now and you're in a bit of early trouble as we see four wickets down for 110 chasing 200 um, an exceptional uh, innings there from Braden Stepien who was our guest last week and he was able to show a bit of calm and composure at the uh, at the crease yeah absolutely I think uh, Steppo showed the, the growth and development in his game in years gone by he's probably getting to a point where he might keep the foot on the foot on the pedal and play one too many big shots, but for him to put the shots away for a few overs and help build a partnership with the eventual Skulls medalist Tom was a critical in us winning that game. So Stepien, 51 off 72. Tom Smythe, who we are going to talk plenty about, 52 not out, off 101. Connor Rutland, 45 off 56, and yourself, 18 off nine. But you both uh, came into the game under injury clouds. Let's talk about you first. And did you undergo somewhat of a fitness test uh, before the grand final? Uh, yeah, yeah, a little bit. Um, yeah, and that's, Evan was really good. Um, at the start of the week, he said, look, mate, you're playing. We're gonna back you in regardless of sort of how you go. So having that confidence and then heading into training on Thursday, sort of had a bowl. And then he just said, make sure you can still bat as well. So um, yeah, so we got through that. And then it was a matter of just rolling up on Saturday and letting the adrenaline and the emotions sort of take over. So that was a side strain. We'll talk as well about Connor Rutland quickly because he had a shoulder injury and then Evan Golbus also has had a knee complaint. So you've kind of battled through the injury ward to, to get to the final day. Yeah, we think Evan's knee's a bit of a myth. That was just the attention <laughs> side to get a little bit away from him. So he had to remind us that he's still there. But Connor Rutland, yeah, he's, he actually dislocated his shoulder in the field and was lucky it happened to go back in pretty easily. Oof. But he, um, yeah, late in innings, so he was in a lot of pain afterwards, so to play how he did 
was uh, a true testament to his character and toughness. So that was that was a big one for us. Well, let's talk about the John Scholes medalist. It is Tom Smythe from the Carlton Cricket Club. He joins an illustrious list of winners to take home this medal for his performance in the grand final. 52 not out of 101 balls and one for 44 from his nine overs. And Liam, he's been a class act for the Blues and in Premier Cricket for a long time. Yeah, absolutely. It's been proven this year. He's been exceptional with the bat and ball. He, he played exceptionally well also in their T20 success at Carlton um, and w was able to do it again with the bat. I think his composure, uh, whilst there were wickets falling and there were some really key um, times where he was able to hold, hold steady and, and be able to be in a position where he could guide the team around and let Xavier uh, do the work and be a bit more aggressive with the, with the bat throughout the innings as well which is very, very important. Xavier, what's he like as a teammate? Tell us a bit about his impact around the club. Yeah, old Tom's good. He's, um, he, he would make you think he's a 25-year veteran, which he's not too far off having played first eleven cricket from sort of 17, 18. So he just brings such an incredible wealth of experience to the group, having played a lot of cricket, a lot of finals. Um, so to have his calm head out there was, was really good. And then even well, when Steppo was batting and Connor and then when I got out there to bat at the end, just his calming influence, knowing that as long as he's here, we're going to be OK. Now, we battled hard to try and get Tom into the studio today, but Xavier, he, he's not really a fan of Media Street, is he? No, nah, he likes to keep to himself a bit, Tom, and he's uh, hide in the shadows, but <laughs> uh, lets his batting and his bowling yeah. uh, talk for itself. So, And as it is, it... It's speaking pretty loudly at the moment. Absolutely. It did the talking on Saturday in the grand final. Let's talk a bit more about it because we know that you won the title a couple of years ago. That was in red ball cricket, though. It's been an incredible couple of years for Carlton, particularly with the white ball. We know you've won two titles this summer, taking out the Super Slam final over St Kilda back in January. Um, it must be a really proud time at the club because we know that it, Carlton is a proud club. Um, there was a time, you know, for a little while, probably a decade back, where Carlton were finishing top of the ladder, um, progressing through finals but weren't able to go on and, and sort of win the silverware but that's turned around big time in the last couple of years. Yeah absolutely um, it's an extremely proud club and it's a proud playing group and obviously the our, our history has been well known sort of through the final series but even there's been a lot of messages from guys who played in some of those teams and who have played in the club in the past supporting the, this current playing group and even there was a group of the old fellas who are uh, managed to throw a couple hundred bucks over the bar for us during uh, on Sunday so it's much appreciated and those guys are um, they mean a lot to our current playing group yeah. and um, so to be able to get the job done and now have two premierships in the cupboard over the last couple of years has been um, really impressive and really proud for our group. Well, Liam, they continue to set the benchmark as a cricket club. We know that the women's program has begun um, and we, of course, had the women in the grand final this year. We had Addie Campion in here during the season. So um, they're really setting the bar for, for clubs around the competition in terms of a men's program, a women's program and, and doing it as one as a premier cricket club. Yeah, they, they absolutely are. And I, and I think from, from a premier cricket perspective, they are consistent in what they do. And, and from mine, I think that's a really valuable uh, trait around... Um, uh, a cricket club is that there, there's no highs and lows. The, uh, the turnover of playing group has been um, low to non-existent over the last four or five years, um, which tends to suggest that the environment that they're creating is, is a valuable one for those that go in, into it. And to have the women's program into a final this year as well, it, it's a well-rounded club that's going, going in the right direction from our perspective. And just on that, Zave, um, you guys were there a few weeks back at the women's premier final at the Albert Ground watching the girls. And um, I know they've been there throughout your final series as well. So how important is it to support each of the programs? Oh, it's pivotal. It's probably, uh, I know from our club, we had a, a good discussion in the male playing group at the start of the year, just how important it is that we are there for the girls and then vice versa, the girls are there for us. So the support they've shown for the male playing group um, has been unbelievable all throughout the season. Um, so it's on us as, as the male playing group to reciprocate as much as we can. And I know the guys really enjoy getting down. Um, we've got a couple that get down to trainings on a Wednesday and then get to games when we can. So that's really important for our club moving forward that those two playing groups are as closely knit as we can be. Yeah, absolutely. Doing it well, the Carlton Cricket Club. Well, now on Premier Cricket TV, it's time for this. I bowl, I hit, I catch, that's it. Bowling. Smashing with the bat too. Smash. Woolworths Cricket Blast is for the whole crew. I bowl, I hit, I catch, cricket. 
Let's take a look now at some of the other grand finals across Premier Cricket at the weekend. We'll start with the second 11 and the Saints were victorious over Richmond. A 109 run fifth wicket partnership between Daniel Meddings and Ben Davies ensured the Saints set a big chase for Richmond. And whilst the Tigers top order all got away to starts, a constant flow of wickets ensured that they were never really in the hunt. Daniel Meddings was named player of the final. And Liam St Kilda, we know, won the club championship and that is a great result for them to come away with a premiership. Yeah, absolutely, and, and deservedly so. They, they, they did have a really strong squad and it would have been unfortunate for them not to, to come away with um, some level of silverware, especially with the challenges that they as a club had faced in recent times with Shane Warne's passing and the like. Um, they've also got an extremely strong squad and if you look at their second 11, you know, it, it would go... Uh, close to being really competitive against you know a lot of first grade sides as well with their bowling lineup was exceptionally strong and I've, and you saw some of the names there that, the, that those players have played you know consistent first grade cricket in the yeah. past so they're a really strong squad and even within the season with the um, variety of state players BBL players in and out of the side it's been a real highlight and example of the depth. Yeah. Um, for St Kilda as a club across all grades. Correct, exactly. And, 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 and like I say, I think it's great to see them getting, getting results here. Um, played, played really strong throughout the year and, and like I say, their, their con contest on the weekend was obviously at a, a level that was uh, hard for the Tigers to, to rein in. And they're always a powerhouse, aren't they, Xavier? St Kilda, across all grades, you always know you're in for a tough contest when you come up against the Saints. Absolutely. It's whenever you're coming up against St Kilda on the weekend, it's a big focus at training that you know you're in for an absolute absolute ripping contest on the, on the weekend. So you've got to be on your game, otherwise they'll get you. Because, like Liam said, the depth in their squads are, is tremendous. There's a lot of first 11 experience in that, in that side playing there. So you've got to be really ready for the fight when you're coming up against the Saints. Well, we love the celebrations in Premier Cricket, particularly on Grand Final Day. We're going to take a look now at some of the great photos from St Kilda's celebrations on Saturday night. Well, if a picture tells a thousand words, Lee American, these are some of the images. Absolutely. It's, it's great to see and, and, and it's amazing the emotional out, uh, outpouring after a game of cricket um, when, you're, when you're victorious. It's, uh, it's, there's a hell of a lot that goes into it um, from family, friends and the like, as well as the players themselves and coaching staff. So... You can see a collective uh, rejoice in, in, in their celebrations. Xavier, what was your favourite picture from the uh, grand final on Saturday? Did it involve your baby? <laughs> yeah, there is a, there's a nice photo of my dog who's been kitted up in an old playing top with the metal <laughs> around her neck, which is uh, a bit sweet, but there's a lot of great photos. I love that photo of uh, Clocky in the middle of the yeah. St Kilda circle there. There was a great piece on him during the test series and he's just the heart and soul of that club. And, rolls up the wickets at the junction, gets it ready for him. So to see him in the middle there enjoying some success is a really nice photo. Yeah, and we've got such amazing club content coming out on social media and digital channels. So thank you so much to everyone at the clubs that are creating that content for us to all enjoy. Well, the Demons are enjoying the spoils after the third 11 grand final as we take a look at the scorecard. Now Melbourne and Paran doing battle at Beau Morris. And uh, Melbourne openers Matt Cheeseman and Brendan Riddell shared a 197 run opening partnership, which put the Demons in the box seat for the rest of the match. And Liam, when you get a start like that, uh, it's pretty positive going for the Dees. Yeah, it's, it's hard to lose those games. I would have thought at that point in time when you when you're out in front um, of the of the game like they were. Um, clearly, some really strong batting uh, front end, and uh, as we all know, if you can. Um, you know, have wickets in hand at the end of the innings as well. Th th this this really helps. So you know, some clearly some great striking there from uh, Cheeseman. Well, James McPhee made a quick fire 50 for Paran, but it wasn't enough for the True Blues as the Dees were crowned premiers in the third 11, and Cheeseman was awarded the Player of the Match for his efforts in Melbourne's victory. So. Well, looking across at the first three 11s, Carlton, St Kilda, Melbourne, some powerhouses there, Liam, doing their best work at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah, perennial finalists and, and, and obviously uh, from that respect, uh, the Melbourne again a really strong club, not only you know, one specific 11, so you'll see this in the performances and, and the players that they have playing for them as well uh, throughout their grades. It's a club that, that holds their um, community as they get older and, and finds a place for them, so it's, it's really good for that 
um, for the playing group to have that mixture of old and young and you can see that with their um, third and fourth 11 for that matter who played off in, in a final last week but it were unfortunately knocked off so yeah they're, they're doing all, all uh, really a hell of a lot of good stuff there at, at Melbourne um, across all of their um, grades. There they are, the Melbourne third 11 premiers and gee, the facility out at Bo Morris is fantastic too, isn't it? Uh, yeah, outstanding and it's just great to see um, those types of facilities being um, created for, for our players, both men and women, to, to participate in. I think one of the key elements of the next you know, 10 years or so from a cricketing perspective is making sure that our grounds, um, both men's and women's, first and seconds and thirds and fourths are at a standard that, that really sets it apart from, from community cricket and that um, we can really um, have an environment that allows our best players to, to really crack in against each other in, in amazing facilities and that is a perfect example mm. of that. Um, both the to south and north ovals at that facility are outstanding and you think that then you've got the Albert ground on top of that. Yeah. It's uh, pretty handy. It was a good weekend for the Ds with their teams and also their venues. As we take a look now at the fourth 11 grand final result, Frankston Peninsula and Paran doing battle. And Nicholas England and Sean Parkers at the foundations for Frankston Peninsula's innings. And some further contributions from the middle order help lift their target to 181. And Xavier, sometimes moderate targets like that can be a bit tricky in grand finals, but as we know, runs on the board are key. Absolutely, yeah. Like we mentioned before, runs on the board and a bit of scoreboard pressure can make people do funny things in finals. So you see quite often sometimes these lower totals can be really defendable because once you get on a roll, you can, uh, you can really get going. Well, Paran's Alex Turner anchored the True Blues chase, but unfortunately for them, it just wasn't enough as the Heat were crowned premiers. But Turner, however, was named player of the final fit, his efforts with both bat and ball. Some great highlights here, Liam, and, and this was a, another great way to end the season with the fourth 11. Yeah, absolutely, and just a comedy of errors there. <laughs> I think that one, um, yeah, will be uh, joked about for a little while, that run out. But yeah, look, it was, and, and um, Turner, who is a young player at Pran there, um, he's absolutely class with both um, ball and bat, and um, he's going to be someone to to uh, look out for in, in due course. I think that's the one thing that's exciting about the, the lower 11 finals is, is uh, generally that's a breeding ground for the next uh, generation of really high quality cricketers that will come through both in the men's and the women's space. And um, what you'll see there are those, those young men um, and uh, in the women's side of things playing against each other for quite a while. Um, as, and Turner's a really good example of that. And it'll be great to see what he has to offer down the line. Well, great to have a look at all the highlights and congratulations to our premiers Carlton, St Kilda, Melbourne and Frankston Peninsula. Well, we love the work of our umpires. Let's take a look behind the scenes of one of the very best. Hi, my name is Lisa McCabe. I've been a pastry chef now for 17 years and I'm also an umpire. I started umpiring to become more involved in my local community and to be more involved in the sport that I love. My favourite experience so far in umpiring would be umpiring on the MCG and also being on field with some of Australia's best female cricketers. Welcome back to Premier Cricket TV. I'm Megan Hustwaite, two-time Premiership Blue at the desk. Xavier Crony likes that title and Liam Murphy, head of Premier Cricket at Cricket Victoria. Great to have your company for our final show of the season on KO Sports and the Victorian Premier Cricket Facebook page. Well, there's really one thing left to talk about and that is award season. Premier Cricket Awards coming up on the 29th of April, the Olympic Room at the MCG, of course. Team of the Year, a few other awards on offer, but the two big gongs on offer on the night are the Jack Ryder Medal and the Una Paisley Medal. Zave, let's start with you and talk through some of the contenders for the Jack Ryder Medal. Tommy Rogers has had an outstanding season at Ringwood and was the top run scorer of the season. So do you think he'll be up there in the votes? Yeah, I think Tom will certainly be up there. He's had an amazing season and he was uh, well rewarded with uh, a big bash, couple of big bash games before COVID hit him and some due rewards into the second 11. He's had a tremendous season and will be sure to poll very highly, I think. You're a bowler though, so surely you've got to back a bowler in to, uh, to take it out? Yeah, I am. I'm, uh, my money's on Ruantha Kalapotha from Casey South Melbourne. I think he's had a tremendous first season in the competition and brings a lot of skill and class to the game. And his numbers have been extraordinary this year and I think he'll be, uh, he'll be the medalist by the end of the night. 
be a hell of a story, wouldn't it? First um, season in Premier Cricket, a leggy, which we love. Yep. And he's made some runs as well, which, which certainly helps, doesn't it, in terms of um, gaining votes? That's it. He's impacted every game he's played in, whether that be with the bat or with the ball. So that'll certainly... Uh be seen by the umpires and the voters, so I'm sure he's uh, he's going to be there. And again, like you said, it's good to see a bowler up there. <laughs> it sure is. Liam, let's take a look at the Una Paisley medal. Our stars have been shining in the women's competition all summer. It should be a really tight count. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, collectively across the, the competition, there's been some really even performances. Obviously, Amy Vines is one that, that stands out as a leading run scorer and Sophie Reid from, from Carlton, who have been able to produce some really big scores up the front end of the order as well, which I think in one day cricket is is going to to really stand them in good stead from a from a fine, from a um, uh, player of the year perspective. Will you back in Soph? Yeah, blue uh, to win. Soph or Kaylin Green, two two blues um, have both had very good years, and I'm back in Green in as a fellow Bendigo product. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Regional Victoria represent. Well, speaking of women's cricket, it's a huge congratulations to our Aussie women on their World Cup victory over the weekend. Love to see it. There they are arriving back in Australia at the Melbourne airport with another trophy for the trophy cabinet and some stunning pics there of Meg Lanning achieving more milestones, more success, more victories. They are sensational, our Australian women's cricket team and some Vicks in that side as well, which we love to see. Did you guys do that on Saturday night, Xavier? Did you go and sit in the middle of the Albert ground? No, because it was minus five degrees. It was pretty pretty <laughs> chilly. <laughs> we stayed inside the rooms for a good bit and then, uh, yeah, we uh, head out to a nice venue later. So Sounds lovely. Maybe next year. Maybe next year if the weather's a bit nicer <laughs> and we're there, we can uh, sit around the pitch with the trophy. That'd be great. <laughs> well, that brings to a close our last show of our first season of Premier Cricket TV. Thank you to all of our guests that have joined us at the desk and on Zoom this season. It started with Evan Golbus, of course, back in round one, Emma Gallagher, Adam Crossway, Tegan Parker, Simon Mackin, Addie Campion, Xavier Crone twice, Shannon Young, Braden Stepien, Will Carr, and Liam twice as well. Thank you so much for joining us. And Liam, has it has it been a success? Oh, I think so, absolutely. And I think any opportunity to promote um, the game uh, at premier level, I think, is important. It, it, from a from a contest perspective, it's it's an elite game of cricket uh, with really strong uh, competition week in week out through the whole of the summer. Uh, it, I think personally, the the advent and in, in, uh, engagement with Frogbox and MV Play from a um, from a uh, video perspective, it's been extremely important in showing the value of this competition. Uh, and from mine, uh, I think it's, it's been an absolute success and, and thanks for your work. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. And thank you to the KO Sports team, our team here behind the scenes at SEN, the Premier Cricket team, Chris Thomas Photography and all of the clubs and their great photographers who have supplied picks for us throughout the season. And everyone behind the scenes and you guys for tuning in at home. We appreciate your support and also your feedback on the show. But until then, congratulations to all of our winners, especially you, Xavier. Let's see if this works. Hey, hey. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next season.